are we aware of what other countries like what level they're at with this stuff yeah so china so so i would say good news bad news good news bad news is it's this is almost entirely a us china thing internationally um, the UK had quite a bit of this stuff with this thing called DeepMind, which was a unit of Google that actually originally got, got Elon concerned. But DeepMind is being merged into the mothership at Google, um, and so it's sort of getting drained away from the UK, and it's going to become more Californian. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's, there's smatterings of people in other countries, other Western, you know, other European countries. There are experts at various universities, but not that many. Most of it is in the U.S. Most of it's in California, in the West. And then there's, and then there's China. Um, so... Good news. There aren't 20 other countries that have this, but there are two, and they happen to be, you know, the two big ones. Um, and so there, there is a big corresponding Chinese development effort that's been underway for the last, you know, 15 years, just like the efforts in the in the U.S. China, China is actually very public about their AI kind of agenda mission. They they talk about it, they publish it, and of course they have a very different right theory of this than we do. Mm -hmm. Right? They view AI as a way to achieve population control. Right. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They're authoritarians, right? And so they, the, the number one priority for Chinese leadership is always that the population of China stay under control, right? And not revolt, right? Or expect to be able to vote, mm. right? Or, or whatever, right? Um, anything that would threaten the, the, the dominance of the, of the Communist Party of China. Um, and so they, you know, so for example, Ch China's security camera companies are the world leaders in AI security cameras because they're really good at like sniffing out, you know, people walking down the street, right? Um, like that's the kind of thing that their, their, their systems are really good at. Um, and so they have a whole pro they have a whole national development program, which is their their government and their company. You know, in China, all the companies are actually controlled and owned effectively by the government. Like there, there's not there's not as much of a distinction between public sector, private sector as there is here. So the China has a more organized effort that couples basically their, their whole society. Um, and then they have a program to basically use AI for population control inside China, authoritarian political control. Um, and then they've got this program called Digital Belt and Road, where they're going to basically ins try to install that AI all over the world, right? And, and, and if you've been tracking, they, they've had this program for the last 10 years to be the networking layer for the world. So fi this whole 5G thing with this company called Huawei. So they, they've been sort of they, – they've been selling all these other countries all the technology to power their 5G wireless networks. And then they're basically going to roll out on top of that this kind of AI, you know, authoritarian, basically control, surveillance control, population control stuff. And uh, on the Huawei. On top, equipment. on top of the yeah, basically on top of the other infrastructure, they, they have the Huawei five G stuff. They've got what they call smart cities. So they've got a bunch of software. They've already sold a bunch of countries to basically run a city, you know, to run public transportation and you know traffic control and all these things. And that's got their security cameras built in everything. And right. And then of course what they pitch to the president or prime minister of country X is if you install our stuff, you'll be able to better control your population. Jesus. Right. If you install the American stuff, you know who knows they'll you know the Americans they're crazy democracy like freedom like all that stuff like in China we we want things like controlled, and of course a lot of people running a lot of countries would find the China model, you know, quite compelling. So, so there's two very different visions. This is, like the, this is like the Cold War with the Soviet Union, right? There's two very different visions for how society should be ordered. There's two very different visions for how technology should be used to order society, right? There's, there's two very different visions on whether people should have access to technology or just the government, right? But in, China, you know, in, in the Soviet Union, it was illegal to own a photocopying machine, right? You'd get, like, executed for owning a mimeograph or photocopying machine. Right, because it was such a threat that you'd be able to publish, you know, information that wasn't propaganda coming from the government. Mm. And so China's not quite that bad, but you know, they're getting there. Um, and so there, there are these two visions, there are these two approaches to technology, there are these two plans to kind of propagate that out. You know, in, in the U.S., what we do is we have companies build this stuff and we have them go out and sell it, right? Or we have open source developers who go out and make it for free. In China, it's a, it's more of a top-down directed, you know, kind of thing. Um, and so, so that's the thing is like once you start thinking in those terms, you realize that actually the, all these debates happen in the U.S. are interesting and maybe important. But there's this other much bigger, I, I would argue, more important thing that's happening, which is what kind of world do we think we're living in 50 years from now? And do we think that the sort of American Western ethos of freedom and democracy is the one that technology supports? Or do we think it's going to be a totalitarian you know, approach? Either way, I see a scenario in 50 years that's unrecognizable. It's possible. Yeah. Well, I was just to say, I'll declare I don't want to live in the Chinese one, right? Like I, right. I, I, I think Clearly. that I think I think that's a bad idea. Like that seems inescapable in the Chinese one. Well, so the Chinese one, it's like you know, well, you have. I mean, you know, look, there are no rights. Yeah. I mean, the whole concept of like rights is a very Western thing, yes. right? Um, and so the idea that you're like walking down the street and you have the right to stop and talk to whoever you want or say whatever you want, 
is like not a you know it's not the majority view of you know a lot of people around the world, uh, especially people in power. Even in the U.S., we <laughs> struggle with it, right? Um, and so the real battle for AI is whether or not that gets enhanced or whether or not we develop a system in America that actually can counter that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then also whether we as we as individuals will have will have will have access to this power that we can yeah. use, that we can use ourselves. Um, so, so you know, the movie uh, or the, uh, the the novel became a movie, but uh, the 1984, right? Mm-hmm. Those are sort of the Orwell, Orwell, um, you know, mm-hmm. totalitarian kind of thing that people use as a metaphor. So, the technology in the novel 1984 was what, they, what Orwell called the telescreen, and basically, basically television. And basically, the idea was it was television with a camera in it. And the idea was it, every room you had to have a telescreen in every room in your house, and it was broadcasting propaganda 24/7, and then it was able to watch you. Right, and that was the, the that was the method of state control in in in, in, in 84. There's this guy who wrote a different rewrote 1984 in a book called Orwell's Revenge, and in that book, what he did is he said, okay, we're going to use that same setup, but the telescreen instead of being a one way system is going to be a two way system. Right, so the telescreen is going to be able to broadcast propaganda and watch the citizens, but also it's going to be able to people can actually put out whatever message they want. Right, free speech to be able to say whatever they want, and you're going to be able to watch the government. It's going to have cameras pointed at the government, mm. right? And then he rewrites the whole plot of 1984. And, and of course, the point there is, right? If you equalize, if if both the people and the state have the power of this technology at their fingertips, at the very least, now there's a chance to have some sort of like actual rational, productive relationship where there are still human freedoms, and and maybe people actually end up with more power than the government, and they can keep the government from becoming totalitarian. Right, and so in, in his rewriting, what happens is the you know people use d- 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 demo- rebels who want a democracy, you know, use the the broadcast mechanism out to be able to ultimately change the system. Um, how, and, how, and, and so that that that's the fundamental underlying question here as yeah. well, which is like, is 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 AI a tool to watch and control us, or is AI a tool something for us to use to become smarter, better informed, more capable? Right. How much of a concern is Chinese equipment that's already been distributed? Yeah. Well, so the so the basic the basic thing, so we don't always know the specific answer to that yet, um, because this gets into complicated technical technical things, and it can be hard to prove some of these things. But what we do we do know the following: we know that in the Chinese system, everything basically it rolls up to and is essentially owned and controlled by actually not even the state; it's the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. So there's the party; the party owns and controls the state. And the state owns and controls everything else. Um, so, for example, it's actually still illegal sitting here today for an American citizen to own stock in a Chinese company. Um, they, 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 like it's, it's, it's people say that they, they, they do, and they have pa- various pieces of paper that say they do, but it's actually there's a law that says that's not because this is a this is an asset of China. This is not something you can sell to foreigners. Um, and so they, they just have that model. And, and 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 then if you're a CEO of a Chinese company, you have a political officer assigned by the Communist Party who.